Listen, Boyd has got to be stopped. Boyd out here cussing everybody out. When I tell you he cussed mullet clean out, does she need to get to it and figure it out all about his raggedy daughter-in-law, Fatima? Let's get into this episode, you guys. We are back to talk from season three, episode seven. If you guys are new here, my name's Ashley. This is My Sweet Perspective, where I give my take on all things TV and movie related. And y'all know that I am here to put you on and we need to get into it. We discover that Fatima is having a psychosomatic pregnancy, okay? Hysterical pregnancy, in other words. But Dr. Nurse Crackhead and Mullet reassure her that they don't believe that she's hysterical. But when they do this ultrasound, there's nothing there, sugar. She said, look again, there's, not, there's, there's, there's nothing there. There's nothing there, okay? Uh, we talk about the strange cravings because we need to tell them. Tell them what? Tell them that you've been eating rancid and rotten fruit, but not that you've been eating people's guts and blood. We're not t- we're not saying that part, okay? But we're going to give you just enough, just enough information that I'm having strange cravings. And Mullet doesn't know. And Boy says, you better effing find out, okay? Because they love to drop the F-bomb. They love it. They love it, love it, love it. Victor, meanwhile, is trying to activate Jasper. And Henry is disturbing him as usual because he's an op. You're not going to make me believe he's not. Henry is a plant by the from for the from. Okay. Uh, Absolutely. That's what he's there for just to be a distraction and a disturbance and to sow seeds of doubt because now Victor's questioning everything and he's having to go back into his mental Rolodex and see what's really going on. Big sleepy, has made Fatima some kind of weird mobile out of bottle caps and shells, puka shells that he found somewhere because he knows that she's been sad and he wants to make her feel better. All right. He tells Tilly, look, at look, Tilly, look what I made her. And I'm like, okay, big sleepy. He's doing a little bit of something. He's, he's, he's maybe finally doing a little bit of something. Donna and Boyd, you know, she he's talking about you know everything that's going on and Fatima and her strange cra- cravings uh and boy says let's keep it between us because again he wants to keep secrets Boyd is a secret keeper okay and he wants to enlist Donna in that and said you know I love Fatima she's been here from the beginning but um she can't sleep here Mm-mm. get her somewhere else because we don't know what's going on. We don't know if it's in her mind or if this really is a psychosomatic pregnancy, hysterical pregnancy, whatever it is. I don't need it here. I don't need it in the colony house. And my thing is you have a whole town full of empty houses. Set them over there in one of them. Set her and Ellis over there in one of them. All right. And we'll be just fine. Big, sleepy, and his camera. Now the camera's taking pictures on its own. And it, and it, apparently it's telling him what to do because Big Sleepy never seemed like that much of a deep individual that he could interpret these pictures on what the next step is, but he surely is. He said, oh, he's taking pictures now. We saw last week that the uh, daggum lady in the lake uh, kimono dragon popped out uh, when he looked at the picture of Fatima and started talking to him, telling him what she could do if he would just do what she said and everybody could go home and be free. But again, I told you guys that this was going to be Sarah all over. And that's exactly where we're going with it. Fatima says she knows something's growing inside of her and it's getting stronger. She's angry and getting hungrier and hungrier and hungrier all the time. At this point, can we control her? Can we control Fatima? You guys drop it in the comments below. Is she pregnant or is this in fact a psychosomatic pregnancy? Ethan, Jade, and Tab go to the Cabbage Patch, all right? And they see Jim is already there because he went on a food mission, left early because, right, he can't stand Tab. They're into it all the time, all right? And so they meet out there and Jim's like, why are y'all here looking around? And Jade, why are you with my wife? I told you, Jade is Mr. Still Your Girl. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Come on, baby. Don't play with it. All right. And so they're there just trying to get more memories, right? Because she's dreamt about these rocks uh, and he she needs to see them in real life. And maybe that'll activate something more. And Jim is really being a hater and an enemy of progress at this point, sir, because let her figure out anything that she needs to. 
let her, let her figure it out, sir. What What's the harm? What's the harm at this point? You guys are already in Fromville. You guys are already stuck. And so now he says, no, y'all go home. And they said, all right, peace, man. Peace, brother. Um, because, you know, they don't, people don't care about nobody in the front. People care about themselves in the front. And so he decides to stay with them, you know, and I don't know. Jim Jim gives just such insecurity. I, I loathe his character. I really do. Ethan basically tells them, listen, dad, leave mom alone. She is like Victor's mom. Drop it in the comments. What are your theories? Have your theories changed after watching this episode is what I want to know. Meanwhile, Big Sleepy is in the cellars with people knocking from the inside. I, he's following these instructions from these from these pictures. Uh, next, we have Acosta. And I told y'all earlier, Acosta was going to be the problem. She thinks she's top cop. She got that little badge. Because, baby, why she try to flash the badge on boy? Like, I'm a police officer. Are you, girl? She come into the diner messing with Kenny. Now, of all of the people in the from to mess with, leave Kenny alone. Kenny has been through the most. He done lost everybody he ever loved in this world. Leave him alone. And she's big mad. Why is no one doing this? Why is no one doing this? Ho, <laughs> we've been here. All right, we've been doing it. Everybody comes in all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed like they're going to be Captain Sava. All right, get to the back of the bus. Get to the back of the line, ma'am. Because don't come in here messing with Kenny. Because I wanted him to cuss her out. But of course, Kenny's not going to do that. Because he's still holding on to the vestiges of humanity that he has. And I'm so proud of him. I really thought we were going to see him unravel in this season so far. And it hasn't come here yet. Meanwhile, Brotherhood of the Night's Watch and Julie are bonding. And he's now giving her driver's lessons. Because her raggedy daddy won't. He's trying to drive this car knowing he has hallucinations every two minutes. Why are you driving, sir? Why are you driving? They, meanwhile, in the cellar, Big Sleepy is like, is this where it really happens? Sir, where what really happens? Big Sleepy and the Kimono Queen are having conversations, and I don't believe that this is going to result in any good thing. All right. Acosta now has invaded the sheriff station looking for her blicky. Again, I told y'all. I told y'all she was going to be a problematic and she's going to be a pain in Boyd's side, right? And so I want my, I'm a, I went to the academy. He said, when did you graduate? Two, three days ago? It doesn't matter. I want my blicky. So finally he relents and he gives her the blicky after he's taken out all of the ammunition. Because girl, you don't need no loaded gun. You just unalive somebody. And I'll have to live with that, girl. You just want to run something. Top cop, that's not how anything works here. Showing your badge. Like what's that badge going to do, baby? What is it going to do? He said, it's my job to keep the people safe. And she said, well, you're doing a piss poor job of that. Girl, you barely here. And you ain't keep nobody safe. You're on a, you unalive that lady in an instant. First minute in town. First minute in town. Tab makes it to the stones, feels the same as when she was a kid. So is it all fate? That's what Jade's contention is. It's all fate. You were meant to be here. You saw it as a kid. So no matter when, how, or why, you were always going to end up right back here. Is it fate, y'all? Tilly and Ellis, and he is telling her everything because why not tell Tilly? It's not really a baby in there. Oh, is she going to be okay? I need to be with her. Meanwhile, Fatima is morphing, cussing people out. Her ribs are sunken in, and here comes Tilly. Tilly, leave that lady alone. I warned you, Tilly. And Tilly's still an op. I don't care. Even after the results of this episode, I don't care. Tilly still worked for somebody. You're not going to make me believe. Ellis runs back to the makeshift hospital, and he's trying to, to steal the drugs, the dope. Antipsychotics. They're like, that's not how any of this works, or this is not Tylenol or Advil. He says, she needs something. She's passing out. And Boyd says, put it back. And Ellis is mad at him now. I remember mom and I remember this and I remember that. And he's having flashbacks because he knows Fatima is going down that same path and he can't handle it. We know he still blames you, Boyd, about the mama. And again, at this point, which nightmare should I be afraid of? And that's the best question of this episode posed by Ellis. What, which nightmare should I be afraid of most? Because right now we're sitting in multiple nightmares. Brotherhood, literally, secret, secret, secrets. He does not want to open up because, you know, they have this shared experience of, you know, glazing over in the caverns down below. And he just wants to kind of hold everything in. They get to this destination and she feels something immediately. And he's like, I got to go. I don't want to investigate it. I don't want to be here. 
uh, we're not doing any of this. Let's go. Let go. Let go. And Julie's like, of course, I want to do it. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Tilly's still messing with Fatima. Tilly's like, it's going to be okay. You're going to be fine. Fatima hulks out, grabs the garden shears, plunges them into Tilly's chest. With her dying breath, Tilly says, run. You got to get out of here. Ellis walks in. So what is Ellis going to do? Is he going to cover for her? You guys tell me. Drop it in the comments. I would love to know your thoughts on this episode. Y'all, it's a lot going on in the from, and I can't wait. We have three more episodes this season, you guys, and I can't wait to dive in it. I'm keeping all predictions to myself for right now. We'll talk about these things in the live. Um, yeah, I'm just going to sit it there. I'm going to sit it there. Are, does Jim play an important role in this? Who is Big Sleepy? What is Big Sleepy going to do? What is he down there in the cavern and what does he think has happened there? I don't know. Drop it in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. And don't forget, we will be live Tuesday. Tuesdays are for From to talk all things episode seven. And I cannot wait. Thank you guys so much for being here. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all of the things. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.